play. Lux got Bradshaw. The Colts have retaken the lead. It's full. Seeking. Throw. End zone touchdown. Macklin. 36 yards for the win. Harkey does it again. And the Eagles do it again. Welcome back to Rome. My panelists tonight are Chris McGee from TWC Sportsnet and an eight-year NBA vet, Ryan Hollins, is back. We are going in. Chris, let me start with you. The Philadelphia Eagles are 2-0, right? But they have not played four complete quarters in these two wins. So on the one hand, they could show you some grit. They're bouncing back. Or are you looking for them to play a complete football game? Well, I think Chip Kelly wants them to play a complete football game, Jim. But I would rather be 2-0 and and have everybody talking about how we had to come back against the Jags and the Colts. But, Ryan... Winning this game on the road against yeah. a playoff team, being down 20 to six, that's a big win for the Eagles. That's a good team that they just beat. And at the end of the day, I mean, we count wins and losses, not turnovers, fumbles, interceptions. You know, however you win, you win. All right, Ryan, what about Nick Foles? I mean, you, you go back to last season, and he had this amazing year. Mm -hmm. But the rap was he's not going to fit that system. He's not going to get it done. The guy's picking up right where he left off. Were you impressed with what you saw from him last night? Did he get it done? Yes. Did he, or did he just manage the game? You got it done. I'm really thinking McCoy. A game manager, really. I'm thinking McCoy and I'm thinking Sproles right now. That was one of the two most impressive performance I've seen from two running backs. So you're seeing yards after catch. <clears throat> I mean, are you kidding me? Sproles was on fire last night. He did his job. Remember, he's got a lot of pressure on him because the fans in Philly yeah. are tough, as we know. And after the first half in Jacksonville, they're already mm -hmm. looking at, at Mark Sanchez and thinking he's a one-trick pony. Yeah. He did a really nice job driving him down the field, getting him in a position mm -hmm. to win. Managed the he, game, but two wins. He, he did what he needed to do. I'm not complaining, but they stayed with their system. They stayed what they did. Their run game was unreal last okay, night. Okay, so let's and talk game manager. Let me just jump in there. Did Andrew Luck look to you like a game manager last night? Because that guy's not a game manager. I mean, take the wraps off, let him make some plays. Did they let him do that last night? He, uh, Jim, this is my real problem. Andrew Luck has proved that he can be one of those quarterbacks that can take over. Um, spread it out a little bit. Let him get, be explosive. Let him be the player that he is. I, I think he's he's definitely deserved that. And for this team to be successful, he has to be that type of player. Listen, Denver dominated them. Yes, they got back into the game. They lost at home to Philadelphia. And I've watched both those games, Jam and Ryan. And I'm telling you, they just look like a team without an identity. Let Andrew Luck go. He's yeah. one of the best athletes out there no yeah. question about it he's, he's phenomenal. thoroughbred let him do his thing yeah. let's talk Adrian Peterson now he gets charged well not charged but there is another incident which happened prior to the one that we've been talking about already so now we're talking about two allegedly what's your reaction to that first of all you know I think it's really tough and you know before coming on the show Ryan and I were talking about this Jim and and, and I know Adrian Peterson says that he was brought up that way there's a story that's out that he was whipped in front of 20 or 30 of his friends when he was in junior high by his dad after football practice and Adrian says this has made me a better man it has made me successful but has it because he's repeating it to his kids now and listen I used to drive in a truck to the beach from the San Fernando Valley when yeah. I was a kid with my brother all the time no seatbelts it doesn't mean it's right to do it today that was 30 years ago yeah. times change we evolve the thing why I'm not so much against Adrian right now is because I believe he loves his son. He was trying to do what was best, but there's a way that you discipline your child. Um, he can no longer use objects. You can't use a switch and take it to your kid. But there has to be a change here, but I'm not against Adrian being a father. There's too many um, fatherless boys out there that this guy has an opportunity to be in his son's life and he's in his life, you know? I agree with you that- It'd Be a father, yeah. raise your kid, discipline your kid, but don't beat your kid. I agree. I, I, I fully agree. So I'm not completely throwing the book at him, but there has to be a change here. You know, he's had two incidences of child abuse. And even though, like, you know, he said, even though we've grown up that way, sure. um, that's not okay. You know, you discipline with love and it's not so much the objects or, you know, you don't just tear a child down. Jim, I just wanted to say, you know, his son calls him Daddy Peterson. He's not in his daily life. I'm happy that he's in his life, but how much damage is he doing but, long term? But, that has to be a you, question. You've got to understand he's not with the mother, okay? So that's mm -hmm. already a tough situation no as doubt. is. So he's got to do the best with what he has, and I believe he's trying to. Yeah, I, I wonder. I mean, I, I think that maybe he, his point is I did not intentionally try to hurt this child. I love yeah. this child. I want to discipline this child, and this is how I know how to do it, but you can't do it like that. He's there. He's supporting him financially. Yeah hopefully emotionally, but if you're beating your child, you're beating your child. Society's saying this is not okay. Everything's so, changed. So in his mind, he's, he's not beating his child, but 
he's got to learn that um, it's not okay. Maybe you got to use your hand. Maybe you don't use anything. You use your voice, you use timeout, you use different methods, but it's almost with child rearing, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But as long as there's love there and the right is done in the right way, um, it's you're very damned much if there's needed. open wounds that result and there are bruises and Agreed. scars. Yeah. Then you're then you're damned for sure. Yeah. Quickly, guys, Jonathan Papelbon, seven games for grabbing his crotch and bumping an umpire. What do you make of his act and does the punishment <laughs> fit the crime? I often go to Theo Epstein in 2009 saying, Pap is no road scholar, obviously. Uh, I, you listen, you can't make that gesture to the fans and then bump Joe West in, in the other yeah. umpire. I think seven games is excessive, Brian. I would have loved to have seen three to five, but yeah. <laughs> Papelbon, man, come on, he can't do that. <laughs> I mean, Make an adjustment on the mound yeah, and, and yeah. get guys out. I mean, there, there's a baseball pastime. You kind of <laughs> you you, you want to see them go at it with the umps. They're angry. You, you know, you, you explode, but you can't. You got to protect the fans. You know that that's who pays your paychecks. And you got to know Philly fans are a little aggressive. You know, over the top. Rose <laughs> Scholar. I don't think dudes even University <laughs> <No>. of Phoenix. <laughs> How about this, Jim? He's close 37 to 41, and they're just lighting him up in Philly. Yeah, it's been right. a long year there. DeVry yeah. Institute, my man. You guys sit tight when we Bob's come back. We're going to hit the best fans' weeds of the day. Stick around and see if yours finally made it today. We'll have that when we return.